Hi guys, welcome back to Harry Makes It Up. It has been a little while since I did my capsule makeup challenge, which a big thank you to you guys for the most lovely response on that. I will link the playlist somewhere up here or at the end of the video. Um, if you haven't seen that, 10 items of makeup, trying to make as many looks as we could with the same pieces. Um, today, this is a really requested video and I'm sorry that it all looks a bit messy in here. My office is being painted tomorrow, so Things are a bit higgledy piggledy at the minute, and um, yeah, this may not be the best lit video, the best organized video, but you guys were asking for it, and work's been really busy at the minute, so I wanted to make it sooner rather than later. Um, so today I am doing products that makeup artists swear by. So a lot of you guys have been really into like my live videos over on Instagram. Go follow me there at Harry Makes It Up, where I've been showing you guys inside my pro kit, etc. And um, I've kind of picked out a few core favorites that when I was looking in other friends' kits or speaking to my other fellow makeup artists, we all agreed these are things like makeup artists can't live without. So some of you might be able to guess, some might be um, new to you things, but I thought this might be helpful and maybe a little bit of like a sneak peek inside. So I'm gonna show you the products. So I don't really plan on doing these in any particular order. Um, there's a mix of, like I said, some things you guys will expect to see and some things that maybe not. Um, and for any of the items that are packaging related or like decanting related, I will pop a blog, plop. I will pop a blog post as well to go with this video in the description box regarding where I get all my bits and bobs from. So that's like the bottles I use um, to put foundations in, the palettes I use, I'll pop a blog post all about that down the description box. Um, first up, a golden oldie and something you're all gonna be like, yeah, yeah, we know, every makeup artist's got it. Um, it is Bioderma um, and I still love this, guys. I feel like it's one of those products that when I've tried other micellar waters and I do like other micellar waters, but there's something about Bioderma that for me, I've never had anyone react to it. I've never had anyone have a sensitivity to it. And as far as micellar waters go, I just don't think you can beat Bioderma. Next up is cotton buds or Q-tips and these are by Muji. These are the Muji Skinny Cotton Buds and I just love them. I literally think of these as like the eraser on the end of your pencil if you make a mistake, whether that's lips or eyeliner. These are such an essential for any makeup artist. And for me, I do like a mix of shape and size of Q-tips, but these are just an essential. I kind of panic if I don't have them. Um, I buy the refills now and just pop these back into the same pot so there's less waste. And I really like that Muji offers products in refills as well. Skincare wise, obviously, depending on the client, depending on the skin type I'm working with, will depend on the skincare I bring with me. However, one product that always comes with me and it's now decanted into a smaller pot is my Sicily Black Rose Mask. I love this red carpet. I feel like especially if I have a client who's been flying and they get in the makeup chair and their skin feels tired, they feel a bit irritable. A, this is really soothing and a nice bit of like, I can do a bit of face massage with this, but it's also nice that I can leave it on before makeup and just kind of tissue off any excess if I need to. If someone's got really dry skin, this makes sure that makeup goes on beautifully. So I love that. Um, foundation, obviously there's millions of different foundations I love guys. Um, but Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, show me a makeup artist who dislikes it. I'd be very interested to know if there's any of you out there that don't get on with this. I just find this such a great red carpet foundation. It never causes flashback. It never looks too much. I feel like it's very flexible and that you can build it up, you can shear it down. And it really is one of those ones that's hard to beat. I feel like I do love the NARS Radiant, Natural Radiant foundation as well. That's great for a carpet but there's something about Luminous Silk for me that is very, very hard to beat, and I love working with it. I find it works great with brushes, with sponges, with fingers. It's really, really versatile, and one that I come back to time and time again. So another product I absolutely swear by is a product that I believe comes from Paris. It's by a brand I think called Maquillage, um, French for makeup, and this is the mixing medium. So I have mine decanted into a little bottle. Again, all the Info on these bottles, etc., will be in the blog post link down below. Um, and I carry this with me, and it is just a genius product. If I can find where to link it to, I obviously will. Um, but it may be one of those things you can only pick up in Paris from certain makeup shops. This is brilliant if you feel like you've gone too heavy with a foundation, you just want to shear it out. I've tried doing it with moisturizer, and sometimes moisturizer does work, but there's something in this where it just kind of like binds the foundation back together whilst shearing it out. And it's also great, say if you've had foundation on a client all day, they're doing a press junket, their skin's getting, 
you know, you've powdered a little bit too much or you feel like it needs refreshing, this is great. You can just use this. I use it on a duo fiber brush. I just kind of bop it over the skin and I just find it kind of reinvigorates the skin a little bit more and makes it look that little bit fresher and as if like the foundation had just been applied. So absolutely love that. We'll link below if I can find it. And then palette wise, um, one thing I love to do is these view set palettes. These are just amazing if you're a makeup artist. I love them because they're see-through, so I tend to write on the back what the product inside is. Um, I've got ones here, so I've got like RMK, uh, not RMK, sorry, RMS, I've got Make Beauty in here, Glossier concealers. In this one, I've got Urban Decay lipsticks. I have one for different branded lipsticks, and they are so portable, so I absolutely love those, and I tend to use those for an array of different kind of products. Great from the go, great for a set bag because you can see what's in them, and I think they cost like 14 bucks or something like that, so really affordable. Another makeup artist staple, and something that I think is really essential, especially if you do red carpet work, is not free lashes. And for me, I think Ardell is really hard to beat. I feel like they're a lash brand that does all their lashes beautiful, but especially the not free, I feel like they, as far as I know, were one of the first ones to do it. And I love that not only now can you get short, medium, long, but you can get tapered, not free. You can get flared, not free. You can get different thicknesses as well. Um, so I always make sure in my pro kit bag, I always have, always have the short black and the medium black, uh, not free individual lashes. They're just great. I feel like, especially when the camera flashes on the skin, you shouldn't be able to see any little of the black balls that you get with those other, some other individual lashes. These are just really beautiful, very foolproof, and they look like, they look believable that they could be your lashes. So another makeup artist favorite, again, I feel like it's a golden oldie. It has to be Chanel Soleil de Tan. I do love, and you guys will have seen me use a lot in my videos, we'll talk about the YSL Saharian. Is it the Saharian Blur? It's really, really great as well. I love that. Um, but I still come back to this. I feel like it's a really just universal product. I love it on eyes. I love it as a cream bronzer kind of all over. It's great for on the body. And it's kind of the perfect shade of tan. There's no orange in it. So it's really, really lovely, even on paler skin tones. I wish they did kind of more variations of the tone, but as far as like a natural looking bronze goes on a lighter skin, this is really, really beautiful. So definitely try that out if you're looking for a nice cream bronzer. I think that's a really great one, very easy to use. And yeah, it's a classic for a reason. So next up, these are something that have been with me from the beginning of my career and I've repurchased them again and again and the casing always ends up getting battered. It is the Makeup Forever. I think these are called the Cream, does it even say on here? I think they're like the Cream Colors or something. Um, again, everything will be linked in the description box, but these, um, they almost look like face paints. They're like a really heavy grease paint pigment. And these are my secret weapon in my kit. You guys, if you've been following me recently, will know I've really edited down my pro kit even because I just wasn't using everything and I feel like I'd even feel overwhelmed with how much product I had. So for me, this is great because I can actually change the hue of most cream products. I can even mix powders into it. And I think being a true makeup artist does mean knowing color theory and how to mix products. You know, don't be afraid to have less and just mix where you need to. So for me, I can use these obviously as like eyeshadows, blushes, but I can also use them to add into colors. Um, even foundations, if I want to add some orange to make it a bit warmer, I can use this as a really great tool that's kind of like a space saver and it just makes my makeup go further. They're really great, great for creative and editorial makeup as well, but I absolutely love these. And like I said, I think this is like my fourth one now and they're just brilliant. The next thing I am loving is MAC Groundwork. Again, another golden oldie, but it's because it's so good. And I will never not have this in my kit. I feel like even if it was up to me, like my own makeup, I could happily live with this as like a daily makeup piece. Um, back in the day before we had kind of like liquid contours, I even used to use this as like a cool kind of sculpting tone, like blended in with skin colors. Um, groundwork for me is just the most beautiful, editorial like nudey mushroomy eye look that you can make you can shear it down you can build it up i feel like the paint pot formula is so good and that you can layer it as well and you can really build the intensity it also works great as an eye primer and i just find this looks slightly different on everyone and some people it leans more purple on some people it leans more gray or more brown but it's just a beautiful beautiful shade that i will always have in my kit 
Next up is Stila Convertible Color. And again, you guys know I love a multi-purpose product and I love that Stila made these in these palettes now. So I need to get the other palette because there is another one as well with more tones in. Um, but this one, I did just wipe brown cream shadow on my face a second ago. So let's make sure I don't do that again. Um, it's just so hot in here and I'm really trying to film without my fan on. Um, looking into AC, I am looking into it guys. Um, but yeah, this is just a beautiful palette and I do use this so often for lips and for cheeks and it never lets me down. For me, I like a cream blush to be creamy. I don't like it to set to a powder. I like to be able to manipulate the product and move it and build it up my fingers. So this for me, again, is another kind of true makeup artist staple. So I promise I did try not to have my fan on, but I could feel a bead of sweat pouring down my face. So I've had to turn the fan on. Apologies for the noise. We'll get through it. Now another cult classic, if you look back to any kind of Vogue beauty books or beauty books that kind of go back as far as like the 90s or late 80s, you will see Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream in it. And before we had kind of like eye glosses and an array of different textures of lip glosses and cheek glosses, this is what makeup artists use. I would use this on eyelids, I would use it on cheekbones for that kind of like dewy skin glow without any sheen or any kind of like glitter or shimmer in. This was a go-to. And I still love it. It's still my kind of preferred choice of lip balm. If I need to kind of exfoliate the lips a little bit, I'll just roll a Q-tip in a bit of this along the lips. Um, and I still use it on shoulders. I still use it on elbows if they need extra moisturizing. It is one of those things that I just, it would freak me out not to have this in my kit. So this had to be included in these products. So the next product I've chosen is Kevin Aquan Sculpting Products. Now, I think when Medium first came out, the sculpting powder, it really was one of the first kind of like cool toned sculpting powders. Um, every makeup artist pretty much has this one and I still think it's a hard shade to beat. But the best thing for me about Kevin Aquan is they did bring out the liquid version as well in the wand. So it has like the white brush and you click it like a pen to bring up the liquid. And I feel like between, I think they do three shades now. So there's like light, medium, and deep. So I think it's great that they've made kind of the textures. There's more ways of applying the product. And it's also a little bit more diverse with different skin tones, which I think is really important. So last but not least, I have this palette. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills, Anastasia Beverly Hills. I never know how you meant to say it. This is their pro, uh, bra sorry, brow pro palette. And it has all their powder shades on. To be honest, I never really use the brow primer. I just tend to use powder directly onto the skin. And I just think this palette is such a great one for makeup artists, especially if you're just starting out as a makeup artist rather than buying lots of pencils. I still go back to this and remember how much I like it. I feel like I still love the Hourglass, um, the Arch Brow Pencil. I use that a lot in my kit, but I do always go back to this. And for me, I like the fact I can kind of mix shades. I can customize them. If I'm really in a rush, these kind of always double up, also double up as eyeshadows as well. So they're great in that respect. And there really is something for kind of like every hair color, every skin tone in here. It's a nice thin palette. And again, it's one of those things I see a lot of makeup artists have in their kit. Mine's quite well loved now, a little bit beat up, but it still does the job perfectly. So I hope that was helpful guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what your kind of go-to favorites are, or if there's anything else you can think of that's like a classic makeup artist staple. Um, for me, you guys know I love makeup, but I do feel like anything to get in my pro kit has to be better than something I already own, which is why a lot of the products you'll see here, some of them aren't particularly new and they have been around a long time and I just keep repurchasing. So I will link to the capsule makeup uh, challenge as well if you haven't seen that. Great for anyone who's trying not to waste, um, looking to be more minimal with their makeup, check that out and it will give you some ideas as well, fresh ways to use your own makeup without buying new makeup. Um, and I really think what's left to say is I'll put the blog post, like I said, to things like the bottles. I had a lot of questions on my Instagram about where I buy my bottles from, um, that I use to decant my products. So I will link that down below. Go check that out. And I will be back with a new video very soon. I'd love if you guys subscribe and I'll see you soon for more. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.